Hello, welcome back to our kind of mini series on uh, the work of Tom Lonsborough, who is uh, going out live as the Two billion beats. Two billion beats. Yeah. Uh, this is his live setup, and he's using Ableton Live. He's also an Ableton certified tr trainer at the Manchester MIDI School, and we're covering kind of a bunch of different tips and tricks yeah. on how to make that work for you live. And uh, what are we looking at this time? Um, this time, Nick, we're going to be looking at, at instrument racks, um, which are a really vital way of of managing. You know, if you do want to play stuff live, um, again, it's a really effective way of managing. Um, the changeover from one set of instruments to another set of instruments uh, throughout your set. So um, for those that aren't entirely sure what an instrument rack is, if I just load a basic one up. So that's what it looks like in its bare bones form. There's nothing much in there at the moment. It's prompting me to drop an instrument or a sample into it. Um, think of it as like a container for instruments mm -hmm. and effects um, and then you can trigger those as if they are one instrument and oh, you can right, either kind of splits and layers and volume splits and layers uh, you could use it creatively in the studio as like a layering tool so you don't have to dim discriminate between what you're actually playing you could just layer up tons of synths so mm -hmm. you know you, you could say Ableton's analog for example if you drop two of those in then you've got a four oscillator synth right. for example um, but in the live uh, environment, what you tend to want to do is, is use this thing, which we'll talk about in a moment, um, the chain selector. Um, I'll tell you what, I'll just drop a couple of instruments on. We'll, we'll look at a really basic one first, and then um, we'll go into how I've set mine up. So if we take that example, two analogs. Now what I've created here um, are two chains. Um, each chain can have its own instrument and set of effects and MIDI effects if you want as well. Mm -hmm. um, and you notice that if I just do that, it's playing me two instances of the default analog sound. But if we were to if we just click on that, let's maybe change that to a, let's go for a couple of, couple of squares and let's just detune those a little bit. And then we'll go to the second chain. You notice it's, you know, the, the default sound Let's leave that as it is, as two sawtooths, but let's just tune it away a little bit more. What we should hear now... That's both of them yeah. playing together, right. Four oscillators, all slightly detuned. Um, this is where the chain selector comes in. Um, it's this little chap here, which if I just move that out of the way, you notice we've got this orange line. That's the chain selector, and these are the chain regions. I can't remember the proper name for those, but anyway. So now you see the chain select is residing above the first chain. So we're going to get synth one and then somewhere in the middle, I'm not actually going to hear anything. And then over the second chain, we've got that sawtooth patch. Right. Um, so what I can do is I can potentially sort of extend these out so that, you know, if we're looking at this in, a, I suppose, very quickly, a creative way in the studio as opposed to a live setup, but we could do something like this, where instead of having discrete values for the, the chains, we could have more of a fade. So fade between do the two sounds. Do those numbers represent bars, or are they just values? Arbitrary values up to 128, so it's like your MIDI, right. you know, a few MIDI controls, which, you know, you can map that out to that, like that. Oh, so now if you, if you had, you could have, I don't know how many things you can put in a chain, in, in a rack, but that means you could basically, as you scan through, you just be going through. Yeah. Oh, I did not know that. That's yeah, very handy. Yeah, so that's, that's totally cool, because obviously you can get these nice evolving textures that you maybe wouldn't have thought of otherwise. Okay, so say you've got those uh, regions overlapping. There's a couple of other ways that you can discriminate between which instrument you might want to hear. The obvious one for live players would be key zones. So you see we've got two zones at the moment that span the entire breadth of the, of the keyboard. So I'm pressing middle C there. Is that middle C, C3? Yes. I can never remember. If I do something like this, so now C3 and above, you get the pulsy, squarey thing. And then down from right, that. Right, so you can set up, it's like a master keyboard setup. So, in terms yeah. of like a set of sounds for, so if you had a big 88 key and you were triggering all sorts exactly. of stuff, you would zone it up to, yeah. to suit whatever song. Right? And unlike uh, potentially, so I've got, I've got uh, one of the Studio Logic keyboards, you can have four zones. With this, you can have 
or potentially up to 128 zones if you want. So that's sort of part one. Um, the other way that you can sort of select is like velocity switching. Velocity switching, but right. don't tend to use that much in in the uh, the live environment. And you can obviously just hide that away. So the great thing about the racks is you can see the inner guts if you want, or you can potentially hide it all away. Um, so right, so in a live situation. You would probably have that folded away and maybe just be looking at the macros. So the macros are uh, parameters that you can map to the individual instances of stuff within there, right? I'll give you a quick overview of how you might want to use a macro. So we've got two synthesizers. We've got, therefore, two, two filters. Um, if I press the map button there, um, anything that's green can be mapped out to a macro. So we just do that. So there's the filter frequency of the first synth. Select the second chain, filter frequency of the second synth, and what we find now is we've got one control for right. both both filters. Or you could have those individually, right? You could have those individually, and then if you want, you can map that out as well. And you can do that. So in a live situation, you can have like a, an entire set of, you know, you might have a piano and string, or whatever it may be. So and, and you're using that in your setup to kind of switch. Mine's horrendous, the, the organisation, I must apologise in advance. Um, but these are all the tracks that we have in our, uh, in our live set, and you can see I've just sequentially placed the little region uh, on the next notch along. Um, the other benefit is you can obviously do a little bit of mixing of the chains. Uh, like I said, each chain can have its own set of effects, but fundamentally it's got a volume fader, panning if you want to use that and what have you. Um, but the other cool thing is if we just look at the so the, the first track that I played, uh, it was called Apollo, there's actually a rack within a rack. Um, right, okay. You could have racks in racks in racks in racks in racks as for as long so as you could. So using it as a container, almost like a multi timber module as a container. Correct. Rather than have an individual track for each of those racks, yeah. you've got them all sort of subfolded into that. Oh, that's interesting. So rather than having a project or a live set that's maybe, so how many tracks have we got there? Uh, let's say 15 pieces of music potentially. We would have 15 MIDI tracks or whatever, and we'd have to unarm that one and arm the next one on the next song if that makes sense yeah we're just using um well clip envelope automation actually to switch between instruments very quickly ah, so when you fire that clip up it says select the next part of the chain which is value yeah. whatever it may so be so if i just navigate away from that let's um stop all the clips just make sure i've got nothing playing so um so you can see i've just triggered this clip here um in my rack track and the chain selector is in now in line uh, with this chain called Beasts. And on that, uh, we've simply got an external instrument device. That's sending MIDI out to the strike fet, which... Indeed it is. I can verify that. Cool. And if we zoom up here, so this is the first track that I played. Oh, I can see I the orange that point clip. has moved to a different, inst a different part of the chain. There we go, just trying to line that up so we can see. There we go, so it's, it's now in line with a different chain, different set of instruments, and hopefully, yeah. Right, so that's an internal one. Yeah, so what we've got in this uh, chain um, is, a, is another rack. So like I say, we can do racks within racks. Um, what's interesting about this one, uh, we've got the keyboard split, so the right hand does that nice organ, the left hand does that nice I was playing the tech Dave Smith. Um, so you can have a mixture of uh, software instruments. So we've got Ableton's uh, electric in there and external instruments. So the whole wrapper itself is actually really powerful because it can throw yeah. an entirely new set of uh, keyboard splits, layers, instruments, what have you, yeah. nested. So that means you can you only need to use one track. One track you as opposed to. to one for each yeah one for right. each instrument and have to sort of find some way of switching between so them that, and that's by using the chain command and moving between the steps that's neat yeah so just one final point on making use of that chain command now obviously we could uh, you see i've just actually mapped it out to um one of the macros you don't have to do that um but what we could do just do that So that's just me switching through all the different instruments. So you, you could do that live, but 
Uh, it can potentially be a little bit fiddly, especially if you're just trying to nudge it over by one value right. without looking at the computer screen, which we try and you know not look at that as much as we can. So what we can do is we go to the clip envelopes, and actually this is the really helpful thing about Live. The last thing that you tweaked tends to pop up in the clip envelopes. Can you see here? So you've got it's the... automatically selected it for me because I've moved that, and now I know, um, you know, which oh, thing so to program. So you put the value in a clip envelope. To Otherwise, say, select that chain. At this point in the song, I want this split, this, this keyboard set up effectively. Exactly. Otherwise, you can see how much stuff I've got going on on that track <laughs> to try and find that parameter. Well, that's, that's. I mean, the reason you've got all those things is because there are so many racks within racks, racks within, within racks. racks within racks. Okay. And you can automate mixer parameters, you know, or set these starting points from, from any point in the chain. So you can see wow. we've got, oh, it's just, yeah, it's so, I don't want so to look tweakable. at that, it's making me feel uncomfortable. So <laughs> all I would have to do, uh, so this is the Apollo track, um, I just have to go, okay, so what position does that fall at in the, in the chain selector? So it's position nine, you see there, so there's yeah. number eight, number nine. So if we go back to the clip, I just need to make sure that when I draw an envelope in, you see it says number nine there, so that's going to be the right, the right place. So it's kind um, of fiddly to set up, but I, I mean, obviously, you, it's best to do all of this before the actual live show, right? It's, <laughs> it's essential to do it before the live show, but once you've done that, you know, and you can just, yeah, you can just switch between different instruments. And, and obviously, if you're triggering a whole scene, you include that clip in the scene, so at the same time as everything else launching, your new set of instruments will be selected. So it's just a, it's a seamless process, but yeah, this is like the tidy bit of the setup. Right. And this is just the a dog's breakfast where, you know, to try and explain this in detail. I, but that's great. I've not seen that chain <laughs> feature before. That's a good one from Tom. Thank you yeah. very much. Okay, that's it for this time. Thank you very much for watching. Uh, great tip about chains. That's something I learned new today. There'll be more coming along, so please do stay tuned. See you next time.